Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss partial derivatives. Let's start with an example. Find the first order partial derivatives of f of x, y equals x cubed y squared plus x sine y plus y to the fourth. Let's work through this one. Solution. Let's start by finding the partial derivative of f with respect to x. That's written del f del x the notation we use, and this is equal to. So in general, when you're finding partials with respect to a variable, you treat all of the other variables as constants. So in this case, we're looking for the partial with respect to x. So pretend that all of the y's are actually constants. When we look at the first term, x cubed, y squared, the y squared term is basically a constant. It just hangs out, and we differentiate the x using the power rule. We bring down the three, subtract one from the exponent, so we get x squared, and the y squared just hangs out because we're treating it as a constant. In the next term, x sine y, the sine y is being treated as a constant, so we simply differentiate x, which gives us one, and we're left with sine y. So we get one times sine y, which is just sine y. The last piece, its derivative is going to be zero, so we don't have to write it you like, I'll include it here in the steps so you see it. It's really one times sine y plus zero. So that's really what happened there. I'm gonna go ahead and just eliminate it because that is our final answer for del f del x equal to three x squared y squared plus sine y. Let's find del f del y, del f del y. This is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So in this case, we treat all of the x's as constants. So again, looking at that first term, x cubed, y squared, the x cubed is a constant term. We simply differentiate the y squared. We bring down the two, the x cubed hangs out. We subtract one from the exponent on the y, so we get y to the first power. Now looking at x sine y, again, we're taking the partial with respect to y. The x is a constant. It just kind of hangs out. Differentiating sine, you get cosine, so you get plus x cosine y. And lastly, we have y to the fourth power. Differentiating that with respect to y, we just use the power rule, so we get 4y to the third power. So del f del y is equal to 2x cubed y plus x cosine y plus 4y cubed. Let's do another example. Find all second order partials of f of xy equals x squared y plus xy squared. Solution. In the previous example, we used the notation del f del x for the first order partial derivative. This time we're going to use some new notation. It's basically f sub x. This is a lot more clean looking, and so when you get to higher order partials like these, these are going to be second order. It just makes it a little bit nicer to work with. So fx, so looking at the derivative with respect to x, we're treating all of the y's as constants. So here in the x squared y, the y is a constant. So differentiating the x, we get 2x. The y hangs out. In the second term, we differentiate the x and the y squared hangs out. The derivative of x is one, so we just get y squared. That's the first order partial. We want the second order partials. So we do it again, f sub xx. This is the second order partial with respect to x. And now we differentiate our first derivative here. Differentiating x, we get 1, so this is just 2y, because the y is a constant. And then the derivative of y squared is 0, so we leave it alone. So plus 0, but we don't really have to write it. So this would be the second order partial of f with respect to x. Let's find fy. That's the partial with respect to y. So in this case, all of the x's are constant. Differentiating the first term, x squared y. The x squared is a constant, so the derivative of y is 1, so we just get x squared. Plus, differentiating xy squared, the x is a constant, and the derivative of y squared is 2y, so we get 2xy. And that would be the partial with respect to y. Let's check that. Again, differentiating the first term with respect to y, we differentiate the y, we get 1, so we're left with x squared. It looks good. Differentiating the second term, the x hangs out because it's a constant. Bring down the two, so we get two xy, looks good. Let's find fyy. This is the second order partial with respect to y. 
So here, um, we're differentiating x squared, we're gonna get zero, right? Because it's a constant. And differentiating 2xy, uh, we differentiate y and we just get one, so we're left with 2x. That would be fyy. Recap, again, the derivative of x squared is zero because we treat it as a constant. And then differentiating the y, we get one, the 2x hangs out. The only thing left is what's called the mixed partial. So we've got two of our answers, there's one more. It's fxy. So to compute fxy, we look at fx, which is 2xy plus y squared, and we differentiate with respect to y. So all of the x's are constant. The derivative of y is one, so we're left with 2x. And the derivative of y squared is 2y, so we get plus 2y. That's the mixed partial, it's called the mixed partial. If we look at fyx, you might say, what about that one? We should get the same thing. It's a theorem that says that these are pretty much going to be equal in almost all cases. So fyx, we look at fy and take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And looking at 2xy and differentiating with respect to x, the derivative of x is 1, so we're left with 2y. Really nice check on your answer because if you do it both ways, you should be able to get the same answer for both mixed partials. It's really good to do it anyways. If you're doing this for like, uh, I don't know, like a class or something, uh, and, you, and they ask you for the second order partials, make sure to write both, okay? Even though they're the same. Uh, and most of the time, they will be the same. In this example, we have to find f sub xyx given f of xy equals the cosine of 2x plus 3y. Let's work through this one, solution. We'll start by finding f sub x. Note that this is actually a third order partial derivative, so we're gonna differentiate three times. fx is the partial with respect to x. So we have the cosine of 2x plus 3y. We have to use the chain rule. We differentiate the outside function, which is cosine. That's gonna be negative sine. We evaluate it at the inside. So we leave the inside untouched, 2x plus 3y. And then times the derivative of the inside function. So we're differentiating with respect to x. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 3y is 0 because we're treating it as a constant. So this is minus 2 sine of 2x plus 3y. Now we go to fxy. We basically differentiate fx with respect to y. So we have negative 2 sine of 2x plus 3y. So the negative 2 hangs out. Differentiating the sine, we get cosine. We leave the inside untouched. We're using the chain rule. And then times the derivative of the inside function. In this case, we're differentiating with respect to y. So the derivative of 2x is 0. And the derivative of 3y is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So we get negative 6 cosine 2x plus 3y. One more time, fx, yx. Again, differentiating with respect to x. So we have a cosine here and its derivative is negative sine, but we already have a negative, so the two negatives is gonna turn it into a positive. We have six sine of two x plus three y times the derivative of the inside. And we're differentiating with respect to x, so all the y's are constants. The derivative of two x is two, the derivative of three y is zero. This is equal to 12 sine 2x plus 3y. The final answer would be f sub xyx equals, I'll write it again, 12 sine of 2x plus 3y. That would be the third order partial derivative that was specified in the question. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out other videos on Chegg. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck.